Welcome back. Of course, we are looking toward these storms coming in overnight, and that's why you're stressing. You really need to have those uh, availability of getting the alerts because you're going to be sleeping for right. the most part. Yeah, so a level three during the overnight hours and you know midnight to about 4 a.m. Most people are going to be asleep and that's kind of why we're phrasing mm -hmm. things the way we are is because it's the, the threats a bit higher at night because you're a little less checked out as to what's going on during the day. You can look out the window and see it storming at night. You might not wake up. All right, live look over downtown. Temperatures, they are on the warm side. Uh, th they were this morning and continue to be this afternoon. Uh, looking at temperatures in the 60s and 70s across central Georgia as we uh, deal with overcast skies, not only through the day today, but then into the night tonight. And it looks like the weather computer has wanted to uh, take a little nap. We'll see if we'll wake it up. There we go. There's the current temperature. 74 in Macon, 74 in Warner Robins, now 70 in Cochran, and in Eastman, 75 down in McRae. All right, so let's get to the radar picture and what's going on right now. Nothing in central Georgia, but there is plenty going on across the nation. All right, back up into West Virginia. There's a component of the system, another component into Tennessee. You have a tornado watch for the Nashville area. But what I'm watching is these storms back down near the Mississippi River extending into Louisiana. They are moving into the severe weather area as we speak. A level three picks up for parts of northeastern Mississippi, most of the state of Alabama. A level four is up to the north. Not a concern for us, but this three does now extend into central Georgia from Jasper County through Jones, parts of Twiggs, House and Macon counties and then points north and westward. So this includes Crawford, Roberta, Forsyth, Monroe County, over towards Gray, Monticello included in this, Barnesville, Thomaston, Butler, Oglethorpe, Montezuma, everybody uh, in that orange area for the threat of damaging winds, maybe a few tornadoes and also some large hail as well. Level two in place elsewhere. That is not to be dismissive of, say, Irwinton, Cochrane, Dublin, over towards McRae. It's just that the threat is going to be a bit less, and I actually do agree pretty much with this line and where it's drawn with the threat being higher to the west and then lower to the east. So let's time it out on future view. All right, this is 6 p.m. We are still dry in central Georgia. The showers and storms really not going just yet in parts of Alabama and Mississippi. But as we get into the night tonight, you can see there's that flare up of activity. Here's 11 p.m. here. They'll begin crossing Interstate 85. We are still dry in central Georgia, and then they begin moving in about 1, 2 o'clock tomorrow morning. So here we go. There's 1 a.m., 2, 3 o'clock. You saw some of those pinks possible. That's kind of indicative of some of the updrafts available in this storm. But what you also see is a, a, a concealing into a congealing into a line, if you will, and then moving through central Georgia. There's 5 a.m. there and then uh, getting out of here along about 7 o'clock. So the timing again, while many of us are asleep, let's take a look at the tornado potential according to the HER model. All right, so this is at 1 a.m. as that line is beginning to move in. And what I want to point out is we are starting to see these colors and move up in the scale a little bit, right? Getting shades of yellow, even a, a deeper yellow there just outside of Upson County, which puts us higher on the scale than say a low end tornado event where we get those blues and greens. All right, so you play that forward and you see a couple more flare ups possible there. So we're going to be watching for that through the overnight hours. Meteorologist Alex Pry and myself will be here uh, kind of tag teaming it between the evenings and the mornings and uh, ironing out all the details. All right, so here's how it all boils down on the severe weather timeline. Beginning at midnight is when we're going to be watching for the damaging wind and tornado threat, which we have now brought up to be equals of one another through about 4 a.m. is when it's going to be at its max. Continues past that to 6 a.m., but I think it's going to be at its max from midnight to 4 a.m. And then the hail threat is also going to be around as well. As for today, a high temperature of 82, 72 tomorrow. That's actually going to come during the morning hours, 64, the overnight low. And then high is going to be stuck in the 60s after that to end of the week and on into the weekend. Back to 73 on Sunday, followed by 76 on Monday.